Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So it finally happened. I think we all knew it was just a matter of time. With the presence of more and more cameras and CCTV and yes, ring cameras, I think it was only a matter of time before one of them caught a meteorite crashing in front of someone's house. And it happened. And I have the footage. But this footage of a meteorite crashing in front of someone's house checked a first time box that I had not really considered before. So let's take a look at this story and this footage and try to understand what about this footage was so unusual. So on July 24th, 2024, Joe Valadum Valadum, Valadum, I'm just gonna call him Joe, a theology professor and resident of Prince Edward Island in Canada, went to take his dogs for a walk with his wife. He walked out his front door, down the driveway with his dogs, it was just a standard dog walk, and when he returned, he saw this on his driveway. And I'm sure he was like, huh, okay. Okay, what is that? So he went inside and looked at his ring camera and um, this is what he saw. After watching the video, Joe told CBC News, the shocking thing for me is that I was standing right there a couple of minutes right before this impact. If I had seen it, I probably would have been standing right there, so it probably would have ripped me in half. He also said that his wife's parents lived nearby and they had reported hearing a large bang while he was out walking his dogs with his wife. And what's particularly interesting about this footage is that scientists believe that for the first time ever, both sound and visuals of a meteorite strike have been recorded. Chris Hurd, the University of Alberta's meteorite collection curator, told CBC News, it's not anything we've ever heard before. From a science perspective, it's new. The meteorite itself we've been able to investigate since then, thanks to the owners. And when I first read that, I was like, what? Is that true? Have I never heard a meteorite landing? And I was kind of scrubbing through all like the famous videos of meteorites falling that I've seen or, or meteorites after they've landed. And I was kind of scrolling through them in my brain and I was like, oh yeah, no sounds. Or you would hear like the sound of somebody in their car, like listening to the radio as the meteorite's going by, or like the sound of a dash cam as a meteorite going by. But the sound of the meteorite itself actually landing? Yeah. I think they're right. And when Joe returned from his walk, there was still debris all over his driveway and the lawn from the landing. And a friend of Joe's advised him that this could be a meteorite, which apparently Joe was initially skeptical of, but he started collecting samples of the debris. And some of those samples, about seven grams worth, were sent to Chris Hurd at the University of Alberta. And upon examination of the fragments, Hurd confirmed that it was indeed a meteorite. And by complete chance, Chris Hurd had actually planned and a family trip to Prince Edward Island about 10 days after the fall. So he was like, um, kids, daddy's gotta take a little side trip on this vacay. So he went to Joe's house and between the two of them, they collected about 95 grams or about three and a half ounces of fragments from the crash site in total. Analysis confirmed the samples to be from an ordinary chondrite, the most common type of space rock that strikes the earth. Chris Hurd said the meteorites typically enter the atmosphere traveling at around 60,000 kilometers per hour before slowing down to terminal velocity. He said that the rock that struck Joe's home was probably traveling at least 200 kilometers per hour or 125 miles per hour just before it made impact. Which when Joe said, oh, it could have cut me in half, I was like, <laughs> 125 miles per hour. That's no joke. Chris Hurd said that scientists can sometimes observe meteorites heating up into a fireball as they enter the Earth's atmosphere, and they can leave behind physical damage and evidence when it hits a structure. And we've all seen a ton of videos of these fireballs streaking across the sky. So just seeing another meteorite in the sky, 
not such a big deal. But for Chris Hurd, it is all about the audio. And as far as his research has found, there has never been recorded audio from such a collision with a man-made object. He said it's really awesome. It's actually the first and only meteorite ever found on the island, and what a way to make that discovery. He also said that every time that this happens, it's a new sample from space. It's come from the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter, so it's come a long way. Way. They decided that the meteorite would be called the Charlottetown Meteorite, as Charlottetown is the capital city of Prince Edward Island. And I think for Joe, just a lot of this was pretty surreal for him. He told a news source, I think I was standing right at the point of impact just minutes prior. It's mind-blowing to think that this hunk of rock traveled hundreds of millions of miles and landed on our front doorstep where I was standing exactly a few minutes prior. My partner Laura and I decided to take the dog for a quick walk. There was nothing unusual about that at all, except that I stopped on the walkway to move a dog leash because the landscapers were scheduled to come and mow the lawn later that day and the dog leash was on the grass. So I thought I would help. I never stop in that spot. Which is definitely one of those things that gives you pause, right? Like that one time you do something different, something unusual, something outside of your routine, even in the smallest of ways and then something like this happens. I can see how that could be kind of mind-blowing. Joe also said just thinking about the odds of a meteorite traveling so far just to land on his doorstep is mind-bending. He said, how does one interpret that except with wonder and awe? Well said, Joe. Now, while this event occurred back in July of 2024, the details and the video were just released by the University of Alberta last week. I couldn't really find any new information, at least as of this recording, as to where the pieces of the meteorite are right now. Or if Joe gets to keep some, I'd be asking to keep some. But I'm assuming it's probably with the University of Alberta. But yeah, that's the story of Joe and the first audio capture of a meteorite landing which is kind of cool, right? Actually, the first thought that I had when I read about the audio thing was, nah, -uh, what about that Nest camera footage of that thing going through that guy's house in Florida? Do you guys remember this? But then I thought, oh, that's right. It was batteries. <laughs> it turned out to be space junk batteries. Definitely not a meteorite. So. I guess they're right. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below, because if you came home and saw this outside your front door, would you go inside and check your ring camera? Or would you just be like, huh, that's weird. Hose it down, sweep it away. I bet that has happened a heartbreaking number of times, just chunks of meteorites that have traveled millions of miles, just swept into somebody's garden, <laughs> hosed away bonkers. Okay, that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'm like, what do I say? Yes, thank you so much for watching, guys. And as always, I will see you in the next video.